Six o'clock news starts right now. Starting today, the San Antonio and Bear County leaders will be giving daily updates related to the coronavirus outbreak. The plan right now is to have them at this time seven days a week. Yeah, we expect Mayor Ron Nuremberg, Judge Nelson Wolf, or both will give us whatever update the city and county have in regard to the number of cases, measures to stem the spread of the virus, and other information they want or need the public to know. We think we're just minutes away from that, but let's get to other news first. The Alamo City could be facing historic levels of unemployment. At yesterday, city staff told council members that San Antonio is projected to hit 12 to 14 percent unemployment this month. That figure, which is for the entire eight county metro area, is higher than anything in decades, including the Great Recession. Today, Garrett Berger talks with the economist who came up with that estimate, and he tells us exactly what's behind it. Steve Niven could barely believe his own projection at first. It sort of took me aback when I, when I first saw the numbers. But Niven, who's an economist and associate professor at St. Mary's University, said the entire pandemic situation is as unprecedented as the 12 to 14 percent unemployment rate he's forecasting for the San Antonio, New Braunfels metro area this month. It's just so unusual that, that we're also seeing uh, the projections are also highly unusual. The entire country is facing a massive surge in unemployment claims. Though many industries are affected locally, Niven said one of the large drivers here is unsurprisingly the hospitality industry. It accounts for roughly about 13% of our overall employment. Restaurants are limping along with no dine-in service. Bars are shut completely, and practically empty hotels are temporarily closing down. Little work to do means few jobs to have. You can see it easily here in the artery of the city's tourism lifeblood, the Riverwalk. Normally packed with crowds of tourists, it's not too hard to practice social distancing at the moment. Niven said it would not surprise him if the unemployment rate goes higher but it depends on how long it takes to get the virus under control, which he says is the first priority. When recovery does come, he expects it to be more rapid than a normal recession, but it won't be immediate. The unemployment rate is not going to stay at that high of a level for a year or, or whatever, but it's not going to just go from 12%, say, back down to 3.1% in one month. Many of these workers aren't going to have jobs to come back to because the, the businesses are just going to, they're not going to be able to survive such a, a, a deep shock. Niven believes we could be seeing more normal economic numbers around the turn of the year, but it all depends on when the virus can be brought under control. That's a lot of uncertainty, uh, you know, it's, it's, but um, that, that's my sense of things right now. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. The FBI says criminals are taking advantage of the COVID-19 pandemic. A special agent here in San Antonio says they've been able to take down at least one fraudulent website alleging to sell fake coronavirus vaccines. Devin Clark tells us how investigators found out about it and what the public should do if another one pops up. The world is hoping for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. When that happens, remains to be seen. Of course, there is no vaccine. But not according to an Austin-based fraudulent website. Special Agent I Michelle Lee with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, investigation says addition. that cyber agents discovered it was claiming to sell COVID-19 vaccines. What those agents did was they uh, worked with the United States Attorney's Office in Austin, and we were able to obtain a temporary restraining order, which resulted in the web page being taken down. Lee says the fake site is proof that even during a global pandemic, there are people looking to take advantage of a desperate situation. They're taking money that should be spent for families to take care of each other for medicine and hand sanitizer and eggs and other things that we need. Investigators say in addition to scamming, whoever ran the site also intended to steal identities. So it would it would put the victims, you know, uh, in in a difficult situation financially in the future. No suspect has been named, but federal investigators say that there is an ongoing criminal investigation. Agents asking the public to stay vigilant. So we're hoping to warn the public that if you see any website like this, you know, don't believe it. The FBI warns that there may be more fraudulent websites out there trying to sell fake vaccines. If you do come across one, you're urged to report it to the FBI or the Department of Justice. We have details on how to do that on our website, ksat.com. Reporting in the newsroom, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Another area where they're keeping a close eye on the spread of COVID-19 is within the Texas prison system. So far, there have been three people, an inmate, a staff member, and a contract worker that have tested positive. Paul Vedema now with a look at screening procedures in place throughout the vast system. 
I'm gonna take your temperature. Uh -huh. Before anyone even gets to the prison grounds, they're checked for a fever and questioned about any health issues. Have you been around anybody coughing in the last two weeks? Inmates too are checked throughout the system. In the facilities themselves, disinfecting goes on constantly. We began uh, more than two weeks ago, two or three weeks back, uh, disinfecting at a higher degree than before, but actually now uh, continuing that effort. And I think the message we should all keep is do not slow down one bit on our disinfecting. Personal visitation has been temporarily suspended and expanded telephone visitation is being worked on as they continue to operate under new guidelines aimed at preventing the spread of the virus. The system's parole procedures also are affected. We're trying to limit who comes into the office, uh, not only by staff, but also by those offenders on supervision. So we're limiting what we do in the office and trying to push that work to the field and so far has worked very well. Among the questions Collier says he's asked most often is whether the pandemic will lead to early releases. Those decisions, he said, are up to the State Board of Pardons and Paroles. They're maintaining business as usual. We are as well by trying to make sure that our programs and services are provided so that we don't slow any releases down. But certainly there's no plan or, or program in place to accelerate releases that I'm aware of. As for accepting inmates from county jails, he said they're working with local authorities in what he described as a balancing act. Paul Venom, a case at 12 News. We've got an update tonight on the situation with food distribution to people in need. Beginning next week, the Food Bank will begin hosting distributions at centralized mega sites. Food Bank President and CEO Eric Cooper says food distribution through nonprofits has become a challenge given all of the restrictions in place because of the COVID-19 response. The first distribution event is set for Tuesday at the Alamo Dome. Families needing assistance will need to pre-register before picking up their food there. If they come to the event and haven't pre-registered, they'll be asked to, they'll be turned away and they'll be asked to register. It doesn't mean they won't get food. Um, we will do another distribution to accommodate those families that don't come on Tuesday. Cooper says they will be setting up sites all over the area they cover. If you need to pre-register or want to volunteer or donate money, you can do that at the Food Bank's website. We have a link to it on our website. KSAT.com. A lot of people are really stepping up to help their neighbors during this coronavirus outbreak. Animal Care Services is hoping that there are some people who will open their hearts and homes to cats, kittens, and puppies in need. As Alicia Barrera reports, ACS closed their public intake of animals this week and is in desperate need of fosters. With the rapid COVID-19 developments, KSAT's news producer, Jared Hoeing, knew he needed a break. I was putting together a show for the morning and as I was looking on our website, there was an article about how there's a desperate need for fosters right now. So he, along with his girlfriend Gretel, answered the call to help foster one of hundreds of animals in need of a safe home. It's so much nicer to go home and know that it, it's a way to naturally get away from all the talk about the coronavirus, all the Good talk about boy. things getting shut down. But Good they boy. fell in love with this guy. He is as excited as could possibly be. <laughs> he jumps up on me, starts licking my face. And decided to adopt him and name him after the Italian poet Giovanni Boccaccio. My dog's name is Boccaccio. And what a better pandemic name than a, an Italian Renaissance artist who wrote about the Black Death in Florence. Claudia Ballerin with Animal Care Services hopes hundreds more will step up to help dogs like Boccaccio. The dogs that we have here, they're all companion animals, so they're going to be the perfect buddy that you need. Their foster program is completely free. This will provide you with the food, with the bowls, anything that you need to foster. We're just asking for your time and your home. Meet Danny. This is one of the many foster dogs in need of a family right now. He's described as more of a calm guy, perhaps your perfect couch potato during this self-quarantine time. The first step to find your foster buddy is to sign up for an appointment online at saacs.info forward slash services or visit ksat.com for more info. As for Jared and Gretel, they still have some work to do with their new friend. CIDT. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. <laughs> All right, checking time saver traffic outside right now. This is Trans Guide 281 at Loop 410 West. There's traffic out there, but not even close to what it usually is at this hour. Usually the upper deck there, the ramp onto 410 from 281 South is backed up. Not the case tonight. 
which is a good sign when we're talking about social distancing and stay home, work safe. Well, the 10th birthday, you know, it's a pretty big deal. Double digits for the first time, definitely something to be celebrated. But when there is a stay home order in place, it gets a little tough, especially when you just move to San Antonio. For photojournalist Misael Gomez shows how a determined mom, social media and new neighbors made this birthday unforgettable. You guys, look at this. Oh, my God. <laughs> We uh, just moved here a little over two weeks ago. Um, this is my daughter, Soelani, and today she's 10. Thank you, thank you. All I wanted was for people to drive by and say hi to you and happy birthday. I was a little sad that all of our plans got canceled for her birthday and I thought, why not ask social media, Facebook, next door, if somebody would be interested in just driving by, honking their horn, and maybe just saying happy birthday. Thank you, have a blessed day. It turned into something so amazing. I got a lot of messages. I received a lot of love. People asking if they could make her something. Uh, people asking if they can just drop off a gift. I was mind blown. I, w I couldn't believe that my mom did this for me and it made me feel really special. Thank you, sweetheart! Yes, we're in tough times and we're all on a lockdown, but uh, this is an amazing, an amazing community. I'm so proud to be um, a part of it. I'm so thankful and blessed that the Lord uh, brought us here um, and that we get to hopefully soon make friends and meet people and shake hands and give them hugs um, and, just, and just share how happy and joyful they've, they've made us. This is definitely above and beyond. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Happy birthday, Sola. Oh, that's Solana. awesome. What a, what a memorable day, I'm uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, the power of community right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Meantime, let's take a live look outside with Citicam 88 degrees out there. That haze is still there, Adam. Oh, it is. We have the haze outside, and we're going to talk about some changes for the weekend, you'll notice. Coming right up. We mentioned at the top of the show that city and county leaders were going to be providing a daily briefing. Let's go ahead and listen in now. Or close contacts, such as family members of those travel-related cases. 35 percent, 42 of the 120 cases, are the result of community transmission. That's why it's so important that we continue to follow the stay-home, work-safe orders. Twelve cases remain under investigation. Of the 120 confirmed cases, 33 patients are requiring hospitalization, and tragically, we have already seen five deaths. We all need to do our part to save lives. We need to warn you that the numbers will very likely spike in the coming days because of more testing. That's right, Mayor. We've done a lot of testing this week. That means in the next few days, we're going to get many more results back, and we'll likely have many more cases in the community. Additionally, both the local orders and the state orders require private laboratories to share their test results with the public health authority. So as those numbers come in, we'll see more positive cases. We don't want to alarm you because 33 people are in hospital. We just want to reassure you we are prepared. For those seeking testing at Freeman Coliseum's pre-approved testing site, you do need a physician's approval. A self-screening tool on our website, sanantonio.gov, can help decide whether you need to see a doctor. So far, more than 8,000 people have used the self-screening tool. It doesn't, require, it doesn't provide a medical diagnosis, but it may help you decide if you need to see a doctor. Reminder, not everyone needs a test. Most people can recover at home. But if you have severe symptoms or underlying conditions, please know the self-screening tool does not take the place of a doctor's evaluation. We want to thank all of you who are following the order and staying home except for essentials like getting food or taking care of family and pets. We see many people outdoors and that's great, but if you're playing pickup basketball or a group run or playing in a packed playground, that defeats the purpose of the order. The virus is easily transmitted. We've seen perfectly healthy people become very ill and in some cases die. With the weak in don't let your guard down. Take the warning seriously. And if you own a business providing essential goods and services, we encourage you to stay open and practice social distances. 
If your business has been negatively impacted, please know that you can apply for a small business loan at the Lyft Fund. Approximately 540 loan applications and more than 100 grant applications have already been submitted. Grants and loans will start going out next week. The need is great, so do your part, and we will all get through this faster. We will be back again, same time, same place, tomorrow with the latest information. So we're relying on you to understand the seriousness of the pandemic and the lives that are at stake. We've seen it other places in the country. So I can't say this in any more certain terms than this. Stay home, stay safe, stay healthy, and save lives. At this point, we're going to now take questions from the reporters who have joined us today. Chevy, we'll get one question and we'll start with Scott. Uh, yes, uh, yes uh, Mayor and Judge. I was wondering about the, the parks, the policy decision to keep the parks open, um, because obviously you want to allow people to have an opportunity to get some recreation, but at the same time, and we're hearing there from San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf giving us starting off um, just reminding folks that we are still under the order and giving us some new numbers today. 120 confirmed cases. That's up a bit from yesterday and five deaths so far. Yeah, 33 of those cases. People have been hospitalized of the 120 and both the county judge and the mayor telling us that they fully expect in the days to come that these numbers will rise. They also pointed out, as we've been pointing out since last night on the night beat, that there is a self-screening tool that you can use on sanantonio.gov. It's the city's website, a self-screening tool to figure out uh, what you should do next if you think you may have coronavirus or if you're feeling ill or what you would like to do coming forward. From they that. did also talk a little bit about those drive through clinics. Just reminding folks you can't just show up randomly at those drive through clinics. You do need a physician's approval to access some of those tests. And as they mentioned, testing is being ramped up a little bit. So we are going to see those numbers spike in the next few days, but not to be alarmed. That's to be expected yep. with the increase in, in testing. Our Dylan Collier is actually in the room. He was monitoring that news conference. He's going to ask some questions. We hope to hear from him coming up a little bit later in this news cast as well as Greg Jefferson from the San Antonio Express News. He is their business editor and a columnist talking more about the economic impact of what the stay home order has. Those stories are coming up. We also want to get to weather though and our friend Adam Kasky joining us as we uh, Head towards the weekend. Should be a nice weekend, I'm hoping. It is. It's going to be a very pleasant weekend. We'll see a mixture of sun and clouds. Temperatures will uh, be a little bit lower than what we've been experiencing lately, and you're not going to notice the humidity. One thing you may notice in the night sky, not so much tonight, but especially tomorrow, is a comet, especially if you look off to the west. Now, we've seen this the past couple of nights, not all night long, but there have been periods, especially shortly after sunset, late evening, early nighttime hours. And what I believe this is, is Comet Atlas. Now this comet was actually discovered just back in December and it was predicted to not really be visible to the naked eye until well, maybe a month or two from now. It looks like it's already out there. Apparently comets are rather unpredictable and kind of like to do their own thing. Better viewing will be Saturday night. Tonight we have the clouds, especially moving in from the west. So looking westward, I don't think it's going to be very good viewing. So tomorrow night, tomorrow evening after sunset, look off to the west northwest and hopefully you'll be able to see that comet in the sky. Tonight we've got the clouds. These clouds are moving in. They're streaming overhead. They'll continue to thicken and we'll have the lower clouds develop and that could lead to a few little isolated sprinkles overnight tonight and a few isolated showers tomorrow because upper level low is passing to the north and we're going to get hit by a cold front. So that cold front's going to hit us tomorrow morning. All right, look at the readings now. 87 Stinson, 86 in Holotus, 87 in Bull Verde. We're up to 91 in Carrizo Springs and Laredo at the century mark, 101. Tomorrow morning, we'll start the day at 70 degrees, 20 to 30% chance of a few quick light showers. Then by noon, back to sunshine, but you'll notice a gusty northwesterly wind. So a little breezy tomorrow afternoon, but we're expecting the sunshine and a lack of humidity in the air as well, making it to about 80 for the afternoon high. Then you get into Sunday and it'll be cooler start to the day, right near 50 degrees, but in the afternoon again, right near 80 with low humidity. Monday's a little better chance of rain. A few scattered showers and storms could develop, and at that point, we'll be in the mid-70s, but you notice nowhere near 90 again within the next seven days. Hey, we'll take it. Thanks so much, Adam. All right, Larry joins us with sports now and the Spurs apparently have not given up on 
their playoff hopes. No, uh, Rudy Gay was a guest on Danny Green's podcast, and he was asked, Rudy was, do you still have the mindset of chasing the eighth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference despite NBA being on pause? So we got Rudy's answer coming up. Plus, college football programs want cornerstone Christian quarterback Lucas Coley coming up. If not for COVID-19, the Spurs would be playing tonight in the second of back-to-back -back games. They were scheduled to play at Minnesota last night and the Denver Nuggets this evening. Instead, the Spurs are home waiting for everything to get better while hoping they can resume the regular season. Before play was suspended, the Spurs had 19 games left to grab the eighth and final playoff spot in the Western Conference. They trail eighth place Memphis by four games. Last week, Rudy Gay was a guest on Danny Green's podcast, Inside the Green Room, and Gay was asked if he still in the mindset of chasing a playoff berth. Yeah, you got to be. I feel like everybody, everybody, uh, I mean, we it's so, so little information. I actually text somebody from the NBA. I was like, man, should I still be working out this hard? Because I, I can use a break. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> if, we ain't, if we ain't about to play, man, let me know because I'm working too hard <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to be optimistic and be ready for whatever, but, you know, it ain't hurt me. Rudy also told Danny he's been catching up on his shows and trying to keep up with his two sons. Cornerstone Christian High School quarterback Lucas Coley is taking online classes at home like so many other area student athletes while we all deal with COVID-19. Lucas is a student of the game. He wants to watch film, work out, and throw the pigskin as much as he can. He eats and sleeps football. Today, we caught up with Lucas at home and asked if he's getting antsy being all cooped up at home. I'm still working out. I mean, back at school, we worked out every day at 6 a.m. I'm still kind of keeping the same structure a little later, about 7, because work out at 7, check in on my classes at 8, kind of get it all done. So, And every night as well, I would lift in the morning and at night, and then I go on jogs a lot. Lucas, a senior next season, is one of the top 20, 21 recruits in the area, if not the entire country. He's up to 19 offers now, including a handful from Ivy League programs. He feels blessed and honored that he's wanted at the next level. Being at such a great school, having such a great team, great coaches, great teammates, uh, I mean, it's really one big family. So, I mean, I couldn't do it without my teammates. My film wouldn't be like that if it wasn't for them. A lot of people take this sport for granted. You know, God can take this from you at any point. So just staying humble and knowing that, like, it's his talent and you're just driving the car, you know? Former Smithson Valley High School and New Mexico State quarterback Josh Adkins tweeted he's grateful to announce he's received an offer from UTSA. A two-year starter at New Mexico State, Adkins recently put his name in the NCAA transfer portal. He's a grad transfer with two years of eligibility remaining, and wherever he goes, that program, guys, will definitely get a very good quarterback. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and recruiting continues. It does. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Larry. Larry. You got it. <laughs> I almost called him Greg. Oh, no. But we do, have Greg, we do have Greg Jefferson coming up. Okay. I don't think it go. was Simmons. I think it was. <laughs> we have Greg Jefferson coming up from the San Antonio Express News. He is their business writer and columnist. We're going to talk to him about what is happening economically in San Antonio and South Texas with all this going on. We'll be right back. Well, as you saw earlier, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf just wrapped up a news conference where they updated us on the current cases and the current state of COVID-19 here in the county. Our Dylan Collier was there. Dylan joins us now live. Dylan, I know that some new numbers were released tonight, but we've also talked about the fact that Metro Health doesn't seem to be releasing as much information about the cases that we're seeing in Bear County as even some other counties around the state. Did you get a chance to talk to the county judge or the mayor about that in particular? We did ask the mayor about that, Steve, and it now appears that Metro Health is also behind in terms of at least getting that data and putting on a map for the public to see. Again, we still have not seen any sort of mapping publicly on the cases. Uh, 120 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Bear County as of today. 42 of those cases are from community transmission, which is more than a third. Five deaths, that was the same figure that was given to us one day ago, so that at least is a positive sign. Uh, we were told during this briefing that cases will likely spike in the next few days because testing is being done on a wider scale in Bear County, and a lot of results from previous tests are now being made available to Metro Health. I did ask the mayor about 
why mapping of these test results in San Antonio appears to be in some places at least a week behind other locations in Texas. And this was his answer. And I don't know the answer to that, frankly, but I do know that the, the Metro Health and the Public Health Authority is addressing it right now. Uh, I'd have to refer you to them, but we are, we are pushing as hard as we can on federal, state, and our local uh, folks here to give us as much transparency in the data. The, the truth of the matter is it's been difficult um, in some cases because of the lack of testing uh, data, uh, but as we get more tests back, it, 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 we need to be seeing more of the analytics, including mapping. And to go just a little bit more into that, yesterday, Metro Health Director Don Emmerich, Dr. Don Emmerich, said that they had a lot of data back. They were working on an internal dashboard that would show them mapping, uh, but that had a lot of health information that they couldn't make public. She was pressed on when the public information would be put out there, and she said they're hoping to have it by next Friday, which appears to be one week from today. And again, we'll continue to press for those numbers in terms of what parts of San Antonio are having the most positive tests results come back and whether there are any parts of town or the county for that matter that have an increased risk for exposure at this point. Steve Eces. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. Also want to add to that. We did ask numerous times to have Metro Health Director Dr. Don Emmerich come on with us for this coronavirus Q&A that we do. We've had the mayor on. We've had the county judge. We've had doctors. We've had a number of experts on to this point. They have not come on. They were supposed to come on on Wednesday. They canceled. We hope we will be talking to Dr. Don Emmerich on Monday. They're scheduled to be here. They're scheduled on, to be on here Monday, on Monday. We'll see. But who we do have tonight, a very esteemed guest, Greg Jefferson, the business editor and columnist with the San Antonio Express News. <laughs> Greg, I'm used to seeing you on election night, so it's great to see you uh, via Skype esteemed. here. I'm, I'm, yes, yeah, esteemed. I've, I'm impressed. Thank you, you. You're, you're <laughs> moving up in my estimation, I guess. Is <laughs> right. what it is. You wrote a column, uh, a very stark column, uh, just mm. walking around downtown, walking around the river walk, and just what it looks like now. Talk a yeah. little bit about that and just what you're seeing in a firsthand basis with the San Antonio yeah. business community. Oh yeah, I mean this would have been uh, this would have been a week ago on Thursday night when uh, you know we had the uh, order basically closing all restaurants and bars to in-house customers kick in. So I decided to walk, you know, take a walk downtown and along the river walk. And I mean, I've never seen downtown uh, as deserted as I did that night. I mean, you know, I parked, you know, on uh, North Broadway, close to downtown, walked to the river walk from there, and I passed uh, literally four people. That's That's never happened. On the sidewalk, normally, especially on a Thursday night, you'll come across, you know, you'll come across people, clusters of, of tourists, or you know, San Antonians just out, you know, for a show or for dinner. There was none of that, and uh, you know, it was just going down on the river, uh, on the river walk. It was just, I mean, it was just astounding. I mean, it, it was just deserted. I mean, there were more panhandlers than there were tourists. I mean, I probably saw fewer than half a dozen uh, people I could kind of identify as out-of-towners. Hmm. Now, now, Greg, we know that San Antonio is a city that depends so much on its hospitality industry. Yeah. Aside mm -hmm. from the hospitality industry, are there any other industries or any other major employers that you think will be hit especially hard during this pandemic? Every major employer is going to get you know hit hard at some point. Uh, Healthcare, though, uh, you know, we're we're lucky in San Antonio that healthcare and and government uh, spending, including the military, those are our two top uh, industries. Those will be relatively fine uh, throughout this crisis. But tourism, the hospitality industry, that's that's our third largest, and that's really taking it on the chin right now. I mean, we're seeing, uh, you know, just today uh, we learned that Crockett Hotel close. The Alamo closed down, St. Anthony's uh, Hotel closed down. Uh, you know, we're finding out that, you know, there are furloughs just across the landscape, uh, including at, at SeaWorld. I mean, uh, SeaWorld's parent company filed an SEC report today saying that they were furloughing about 90% of their employees just across the board, and that includes at San Antonio Park. And this is not uncommon. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is happening everywhere. 
but we're really feeling it intensely in San Antonio because just so much of our of our economy is driven by uh, hospitality and leisure. And this is, you know, this crisis just seems like it is uniquely uh, suited to wipe out the visitor industry. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's sown a lot of fear and the travel restrictions and all of these stay in place, shelter in place orders have really kind of wreaked havoc. Greg, stay with, stay with us, Greg. We're going to take a quick sure. break. We'll be right back with Greg Jefferson from the San Antonio Express News. <laughs> And we are back with Greg Jefferson, business editor and columnist with the San Antonio Express News. And Jeff, I, I want to ask, or Craig, excuse me, I, I want to ask you really qu quickly about unemployment claims. You know, we had heard reports mm -hmm. earlier that uh, the offices were overwhelmed. There was just a massive filing of these benefits. What are what are you hearing from your? Oh uh, yeah, we're yeah we're hearing the same thing. We're getting a, a lot of really exasperated, newly unemployed workers in San Antonio contacting our office because they've gone to the Texas Workforce Commission website and they just can't, you know, it, it either crashes or they can't, they can't file. And it, it's very frustrating to them. Uh, you know, we haven't heard from TWC today, but I have to think that they're, you know, they're working on kind of the backbone of their system and hopefully they'll have increased capacity going forward. Because, I mean, one thing's for sure. I mean, we're just at the beginning of, of the economic fallout of this. I mean, you know, this is we're nowhere close to kind of the, the high tide of layoffs. So, you know, hopefully they, they get their system in order. Greg, I know you, you, you kind of have your finger on the pulse of what's happening with the business community. When you talk to some of the leaders of the major corporations, big and small in San Antonio, are they thinking we, we're not going to spend a lot of money, we're going to hunker down, or, uh, I, I mean, is that kind of the feeling that you're getting from a lot of these leaders? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, every, I mean, just take the, the oil and gas industry. I mean, every oil producer is slashing its capital projects budget. So this is, you know, this, is, this could be, you know, uh, adding on to an existing refinery. It could be some less than necessary maintenance. It could be a new pipeline system. That's being scrapped now, um, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that they're not also laying off workers. I mean, that will come at some point. But yeah, I mean, uh, every business across just about every industry is probably taking out a really sharp pencil right now and looking for places to cut. Uh, also, you're finding, you know, we we know this from talking to uh, you know a number of San Antonio bankers. A lot of businesses now are really drawing down their credit lines or trying to kind of build up a cushion of cash uh, just just to kind of weather what they know is coming. And it's, you know, they just they know it's not going to be good, you know, a good few months and they just want to be ready for it. They want to have plenty of cash on hand. Absolutely. Greg Jefferson, the business editor and columnist with the San Antonio Express News. You're going to join us again during the KSAT News at 9 tonight to take some viewer questions. Appreciate your time at 6. Thanks, yeah, Greg. Thank you. And we'll be sure. right back. And welcome. Oh, welcome back. Hey, hey, good to see you both. Take it away, Adam. Yeah, I thought we were yes. coming right to me, so why not? You know, we're still getting used to the social distancing. <laughs> a, lot to, a lot to iron out with the social distancing when it comes to, uh, to working. All right, so I, I do want to talk about something again that I touched on earlier, and some of you I know have noticed a bright object in the night sky, especially looking west shortly after sunset. And after doing a lot of research, there wasn't really a, a definitive answer, but what I'm pretty sure this is is an earlier than expected appearance of comet atlas and that's our, great video by the it way. is and that's from our chopper and you can see the distinct tail looks like a comet uh it's i believe that's venus maybe just to the upper left of it i can't tell for sure without uh more information but you can see that bright stationary object it's stationary and i think comet atlas here has actually made an appearance so let's talk about comet atlas and tonight i will say right away is not going to be good viewing for it we'll probably have better viewing tomorrow night with a clear sky but comet atlas was actually discovered back in december so just back in december of 2019 and then it was and it was discovered by the automatic the automated system that nasa has stationed in hawaii that automatically detects uh, basically different uh, asteroids and whatnot in space to see if there could be that any that come close to earth well it also sometimes will find a new comet and so it's december in december they discovered it the predictions were 
it wouldn't really show up and be visible to the naked eye for maybe a few more months. But apparently comets are also very unpredictable and they like to do their own thing and they can be erratic. And so it's, it's already been several magnitudes brighter than what they had anticipated by this point. So we're thinking it's Comet Atlas. Better viewing tomorrow night after sunset. Look to the west northwest. Hopefully you'll be able to see it this evening. I think you'll have a not a good chance of seeing it because of the clouds that are moving in and the clouds that are increasing from the west and they're going to shroud out uh, the viewing of the stars and even that comet tonight. So here's our overall weather pattern. Speaking of those clouds, we have a cold front that's just on the back edge of the, all these clouds that are streaming in. And that cold front is what we've been talking about for days now. It's the cold front that's going to be moving through tomorrow morning. It's going to impact our temperatures and our humidity already near the front. Lubbock 74, El Paso 74, Midland 81. Meanwhile, here in South Texas, we're near 80 in the hill country, but 101 in Laredo. Catula's 96, 91 in Pleasanton. We're feeling the warmth again today and 88 here in San Antonio and the humidity as well. So we still have that southeasterly breeze, so it's muggy outside. That's going to be changing, though, as we get into the weekend. Today we have the humidity tomorrow. No, the whole weekend the humidity is gone. It'll spike a little bit on Monday, but actually the middle part of next week feeling pretty comfortable as well. So behind the cold front, we'll have a very pleasant weekend. Good weekend to get a little exercise in outdoors. If you're a little stir crazy from being inside so much, it's OK. You can go outside on a walk. Just maintain your social distance from other folks. So tomorrow morning, late tonight and tomorrow morning, about a 20 to 30% chance of a few showers. Then sunny by noon, 72, 81 the high temperature. So a little bit cooler than what we've been having recently and the lack of humidity will make it feel nice. A northwesterly wind at 10 to 20. So you'll notice the breeze throughout the day as well. Then into Sunday, look at this in the morning, right near 50. So you'll notice that drop in temperature Sunday morning. If you're an early riser, Get outside, feel that crisp air because these mornings are limited this time of year. We all know that April's right around the corner and then comes May and goodbye to anything like that. Low humidity Sunday, overall a pleasant weekend, mixture of sun and clouds, afternoons right near 80. So nothing to worry about weather wise this weekend. You can get outside, have a good time. By Monday, that's when we could have a few scattered showers and even a few thunderstorms. But notice no 90 degree temperatures in the forecast actually for the next seven days. So that comment, I'm very fascinated by it. I do want to point out I'm waiting to hear back from my pal uh, Kelly Beatty of Sky and Telescope magazine. He is the authority on the night sky and he's going to give me confirmation or let me know what we're seeing around. Good because right. there really isn't a lot of information on it yeah. right now. Yeah, thanks Adam. In case you missed it, it's coming up next. Here's today's In Case You Missed It. Governor Greg Abbott announcing a new effort to stop the spread of COVID-19. Three Texas National Guard Joint Task Force Brigades are being deployed throughout the state to assist with drive-through testing and support the state's health care infrastructure. Hey, Governor Abbott says Guard members have been preparing for their missions over the last week. Their goal is to help Texans get screened safely and efficiently while ensuring safety for everyone else. A local economist is predicting a 12 to 14 percent unemployment rate this month for San Antonio and says things could get even worse. An associate professor at St. Mary's who consults for the city came up with that figure, which was presented to city council members yesterday. While many industries are suffering right now, he said hospitality is a large driver of unemployment here and whether it gets worse depends on how quickly the health crisis can be brought under control. The United States seeing a surge of coronavirus cases across the country with several significant increases in major cities. Several hospital systems in densely populated areas are already overwhelmed and are bracing for an onslaught of more patients. We also see hot spots like Detroit, like Chicago, like New Orleans that will have a worse week next week than what they had this week. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center organizing five upcoming blood drives to prevent a blood shortage. The drives are going on from March 30th till April 5th at different locations, including the Pearl, Stevens High School, the Cornerstone Central Campus. You can also schedule an appointment to donate at your convenience. We have all this information right now on our website, ksat.com.
Well, if you stop and think about it, the new fashion trend starting to reveal itself at stores is not that surprising with so many people working at home. Millions of white collar workers have traded their business suits for something a little more comfortable. Yeah, Walmart says that's translated into sales for tops, but not bottoms. After all, when video conferencing, you don't have to dress your best from head to toe to look presentable for those meetings. It's actually one of the questions Pajamas I get a lot. I get day. I get que that question a lot. You like, do. are you wearing shorts with your suit top? And People I'm like, have I asked me, does Steve wear pants? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I wear pants. Yes, he does. Much to ECs' relief. <laughs> <laughs> I do wear tennis shoes on Friday, but but yeah, I do wear suit pants. Yeah, you got to rock the sneakers at least. You know, you're moving around a lot. My yeah. casual, it's my casual Friday look is the sneakers. And they're chucks too. I got the chucks on today. Yep. Yeah. So a few isolated showers tonight through tomorrow morning. Not much in terms of rainfall. Otherwise, a very pleasant and overall comfortable weekend. All right. Thank you, Adam. And thanks so much for watching the news at 6. See you online at 9 and, of course, on the night beat at 10.